Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral researcher based in Vienna and in this video I'll discuss the accuracy of the Withings or Nokia Thermo, a thermometer that measures your temperature on your forehead. I've tested the Withings Thermo twice a day over the last two years while also taking my temperature with a normal rectal thermometer. Now these rectal thermometers are generally considered to be the most accurate way of measuring your temperature and in this video I'll compare the two. To summarize, the Withings Thermo is not that accurate and it makes some very specific measurement errors, though it is generally able to detect when you have a fever. Given the current corona epidemic, more and more people need to check their temperature on a regular basis. And of course this needs to be done accurately. Now, the most accurate way of measuring your temperature is using a rectal thermometer. But of course this is quite invasive and it can be quite inconvenient, which is why some people prefer a less invasive method. Now this is where the Withings Thermo comes in. The Withings Thermo measures your temperature on the forehead and automatically syncs it with the app on your phone. Now Withings brands it as being especially suited for children since it's non-invasive and can be used even without touching the forehead. Now to be clear, the device is known as both the Withings and the Nokia Thermo. Originally the company was named Withings, then it was taken over by Nokia, and then it was taken over by Withings again. So it's named the Withings Thermo again, but depending on why you bought it, it might be the Nokia or Withings Thermo, but it's the exact same device. To test the accuracy of the device for the last two years, each morning and each evening I've been taking my temperature with both the Withings Thermo and with the Rectal Thermometer. Now this is the brown PRT1000. For those of you who are non-native English speakers like me, Rectal means What what in the butt? I said what what in the butt? Now rectal temperature measurements are generally considered to be the most accurate way of measuring your body core temperature at home which is why I'll use this as a baseline and see how well the Withings Thermo agrees with this. Now, let's have a look at the results. So here we're looking at my evening measurements. Now on the horizontal axis we have my temperature according to the rectal thermometer. On the Y axis or the vertical axis we have the temperature according to the Withings Thermo. I also added Fahrenheit for those of you who are not from Europe. And each dot here is a single measurement. And as you can see, there's a nice correlation between the two. So as my body temperature according to the rectal thermometer increases, also the withings increases, but there is a lot of variation here. So if we look, for instance, here at 36.3 degrees Celsius, you can see that the withings says my temperature is anywhere from 36.5 to 37.2 degrees Celsius, which is quite a spread. And what you can also see is that it generally predicts too high a temperature for me. Where my normal body temperature is between 36 and 37 degrees Celsius, the Withing says my normal body temperature is between 36.5 and 37.4 degrees Celsius. But the Withings is able to pick up on those times when I had a slightly raised temperature. So here there are two moments, two nights, when my temperature was slightly raised, so around 100 degrees Fahrenheit or about 37.8 degrees Celsius. And both of those times are also the highest temperatures that the Withings picked up on and clearly higher than any of the other points. So it is able to pick up on that fever, though here in the normal range it doesn't seem to perform that well. So not able to distinguish between anything like 36.1 degrees Celsius or 36.8 degrees Celsius. Now let's also have a look at my morning measurements. Those you see here. One thing you can appreciate again, there's this clear correlation, but I never in the morning had such a high fever as I had in the evening or such a high temperature. So the correlation is about the same, but again you see these big spreads. As an example, let's look at a body core temperature in the morning of 36.5 degrees Celsius, which is this line here, where my real temperature was 36.5. The Withing says it's anywhere between 36.7 and 37.8 degrees Celsius. Now you can see there's this outlier here at 36.8 degrees Celsius according to the thermo, where in reality I did not have a raised temperature and my temperature was the normal 36.5 degrees Celsius. To look in a bit more detail at the temperature deviations, we can create what is called a bland Altman plot. That's what I've made here. So what I'm showing here on the x-axis is my true body temperature, so measured with a rectal thermometer as we showed before. 
but now on the y-axis or the vertical axis I have the difference between the thermo and the rectal. So if the difference is zero it would be perfect, so a perfect measurement and perfect agreement between the rectal thermometer and the withings. If it's positive it means that the thermo predicted a higher temperature and if it's negative it predicts a lower temperature. As we saw before the thermo generally predicts my temperature to be too high but what I think is especially interesting is that this deviation is bigger the lower my actual temperature is. So around 36 degrees Celsius or 97 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature difference between the thermo and the rectal thermometer is about 0.7 degrees Celsius or a little bit more than 1 degree Fahrenheit. Whereas if we go to the higher temperatures, this slowly goes down. And at the moment that I'm getting a fever or close to having a fever, it's pretty accurate. So this again goes to show that in this normal range of temperatures, the Withings is not as good at estimating your temperature. But the moment you have fever or something close to a fever, it can sort of predict that. So that means if you want to just know if you have a fever, the Withings might be okay for that. But tracking your temperature in a normal range, that might not work that well. Of course, we can make similar plots for my morning measurements, which is what I've shown here. And the results are basically the same. At low temperatures, the thermo has big deviations of about 1 degree Celsius or almost 2 degrees, 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. But as my temperature rises, the deviations become smaller and towards the higher spectrum is pretty accurate. Though again here we have that one point that deviates a bit where the thermo might have said that I had a slightly raised temperature where in all reality my temperature was normal. So the thermo is clearly more accurate at higher temperatures, which does mean it can probably pick up on when you have a fever. Though we did see that one false positive value there. And I have two other problems with this. The first one is that if you want to track your temperature in a normal range, for instance women who want to track their period, the thermo is probably not that suited for that. The second one is that it's more difficult to say if you have an actual raised temperature, if values are always higher to begin with. I also had a look at the scientific literature about the reliability of forehead thermometers. And this generally tends to agree with my findings. There was one big review by the Canadian Agency for Drug and Technologies in Health and they showed that rectal and oral thermometers are the most reliable, ear thermometers are kind of okay, and that thermometers used on the forehead are the least reliable. At this moment I'm actually also making a video about the reliability of different types of thermometers. So rectal thermometers, oral thermometers, thermometers used under your armpit, thermometers used in the ear, on the forehead, and those thermal scanners that they use at airports. Now this should be out soon and once it's there you can find it linked somewhere here. So should you buy the Withings thermometer? Well at 100 euros or 100 dollars it's quite expensive and as you saw in my review here it's not that accurate. Unless you want it for the coolness factor or because it automatically syncs to your phone. I think if you just want to know if you have a fever there are much cheaper alternatives out there. The cheapest of course being a rectal or oral thermometer. You can get these at a drugstore for like 10 bucks and they're pretty accurate or if that's too invasive for you, you could buy an air thermometer for like 30, 40 bucks and these are pretty reliable as well. Do you have any experiences with the Withings or Nokia Thermo? Well, leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, liking or commenting because if you do that, the YouTube algorithm does fancy stuff and shows my video to more people. But of course, it's totally up to you. For now, I wish you a wonderful and healthy day and see you in the next video.